The first records on the ancestors of the Evans from the Sredini range were found in the diaries of the explorer Carl Dittmar, who made an ethnographic map of Kamchatka in 1855. According to his records, the Lamuts, as the Yevans were called at the time, arrived from the western coast of the Akhotsk Sea and settled in deserted mountains along the banks of the Bistraya River. This is how this branch of the Yevans got their name, the Bistraya Yevan Hermits. Regardless of the way the neighbors preferred to name the aboriginals, the Yevans referred to themselves as the reindeer people. During 200 years of solitude away from the kindred tribes, they managed to preserve their unique reindeer breeding culture following the laws of Mother Earth, Yenin Buga. My father used to take care of this herd while I studied. Then I served in the army, and only then I became a herdsman. We have four herds. We have to work to provide for our families. Kiryak Adukanov is the head of one of the local communities. He speaks briefly and prefers to stick to the point, as all the Yevon nomads do. They have a proverb, don't say much out loud or you'll get a callus on your tongue. That's most probably why the Yevon only speak when there's a reason. Tie the rope around your hand. Be careful with the head. It is tangled. That's it. Make the harness shorter for now. The stick for steering should be placed here. You have to remove it during the ride, otherwise you'll roll over. Pull the rope here. Okay, I'll pull it tighter now. Ilya is the direct descendant of the elder, the one who has to follow the footsteps of the ancestors. According to the beliefs of the Evans, these footsteps are all that is left on Earth after death. A shadow of misfortune can also come from the other world following the same footsteps, though, the way it happened with Ilya. It's hard for him to work at full speed. When he was one year old, he had a heart surgery. That's why he has some problems now. This is what Inni is about, the path of a man predetermined by the god Hevki. It's only the guardian reindeer, given to each of the descendants of the reindeer people by the god of the sun, who can save one from the evil fate. The Evans call him Hevek, which means the shadow of the god of the sun. The spirit lives in the reindeer and in amulets which are passed from generation to generation and are kept in the nomadic camps by the mistresses of the yurts. In the Adukana family, this is Lubov, the wife of Keryak, and his sister Maya, who promised to give the amulets to Ilya before the reindeer drawn sleigh competition. Let my nephew Ilya sit with us. I will now show you something. This is what my mother and your grandmother bequeathed to me and that I will pass on to you when you are ready to participate in the competitions and the ritual of offering a sacrifice to Hefki. Take it. These are the ear tips of a fawn. They are sacred to our family. They symbolize the prompt return of the reindeer souls to us. Maya is a shaman by birth. She is not only a guardian of the sacred amulets, she also keeps the knowledge and memories of the ancestors. 
We also had sacred reindeer in our family. We also worshipped bears, nature, and reindeer, especially as they gave us clothing, shoes, and food. The cult of a sacred reindeer is one of the main cults in the Adukana family. It's time to feed the meat of an old reindeer to the fire. Lubov, the wife of Kiryak, cuts the carcass with a special knife and hangs the meat over the oven to summon the spirits of the place so that they don't interfere with the ceremony of offering a sacrifice to Mother Earth, Yenin Buga. To receive the blessing of Hevki, Maya sings an ancient chant. It brings luck and good weather during the upcoming ritual so that the spirit of the sun would re-emerge on earth and everything would start over again. The first rays of Hevki light the valley the next day around 9 a.m. Here, up in the mountains, sunrise always comes later and sunset a little earlier than in the lowlands. The smoke from the fire flows over the yurt. For the Yevans, fire is the main source of heat, a sacred gift from the sun. It lives in the trees from which the god Hevki taught people how to heat food using fire. This wood is used to keep the house warm and to make campfires. Usually, women make the fire outside to cook reindeer meat without filling the shelter with smoke. It is easier and faster to cook this way. How long have you been cooking the meat for? It must be ready by now. I brought it from the urt this morning, washed it because it had started to dry out in the house where I placed it yesterday. I see. You cut it into small pieces so that it cooks faster. Yes. I put them in one by one, first the hardest pieces so that they can become soft. The fattier it is, the better. That's right. You know how our men are. They want it fast and delicious. Lubov has been married to the elder for over 30 years. She's become the top local chef during those years, and she knows the specialties of local cuisine better than anyone. Outside, when I arrived here, women always cooked this way. The meat cooks fast, and when a man comes, he can have a hot meal straight away. So I hung it there, and then I added rice, rice, salt, and some parsley, in the Evan traditional way. My husband prefers this to the way the Russians cook it. He doesn't like spices. His stomach cannot digest Russian food. And this is a very traditional Evan way of cooking. Meanwhile, the elder and his sons are ready to go to the herd. It is important to go up the mountain. That's where the reindeer are, before the sun reaches its highest point. That's when the offering has to be made. A reindeer will be killed and his shadow soul will be sent to the god Hevki. Then there is a chance that the twin animal guarding Ilya will be able to ask the spirit of the sky to cure him. However, the reindeer in the pasture seemed to have sensed the approaching death. They panicked, and the herd dispersed. It took a while to calm them down. The elder is starting to become anxious. It is up to Kiryak 
to choose the sacred victim in the herd. No arms are used, only the Yevan lasso, maut, and a special technique for managing a herd where every whistle has a special meaning. There are different types of whistles, racing, soothing, hypnotizing, to turn the herd around. There's also a type of whistle used to calm them down. The actions of the reindeer herdsmen are similar to a shaman's ritual. A magic whistle indeed makes the reindeer calm down and move in a circle clockwise. That symbolizes the celestial motion of the sun as per the Yevon tradition. So that the soul of the sacrificial reindeer, the Hevik, the shadow of the god Hevki, is sent to the sun. Here's the first attempt, but the animal breaks away from the lasso. Another attempt follows, but the snow is still too deep to chase the animal. The reindeer win a short reprieve. You can hear the sound of the antlers beating against each other as if it's the pulse of the entire herd. Everything is resolved in a few minutes when the lasso eventually reaches the Hevik reindeer, who is destined to become the ambassador of the Adukana family. The second lasso follows the first to lessen the animal's fight and to facilitate the ritual of offering a sacrifice. The elder grasps the leg of the animal and utters something. According to their tradition, the Yevans ask the spirit of the reindeer to forgive them before they stick a knife into the animal. The climax is reached in a few minutes when the reindeer herdsmen skin the animal. Now, according to the old tradition, everyone has to drink the communion blood of the sacrificed Hevik. That was the covenant of the sacred reindeer Enin Buga. He told the first man, if you do everything right, then next spring my shadow soul will come back to earth in the rays of the sun and will give birth to new reindeer and the new reindeer people. Here in the Kamchatka Mountains, where the Yevans prefer the solitude of a nomadic lifestyle to civilization, following the traditions is necessary for the survival of the people, as old traditions and songs are two delicate threads connecting the reindeer people with their ancestors. The history of our people is not just in the legends, but also in the Budi Lukche, the ornament of nomadic paths which still decorate the traditional apron, Nain. Mother taught us how to read those patterns. Here you can see how often our people change their location. Here we see the image of the reindeer leg symbolizing the descent into a valley or ascent into the mountains, or even crossing a river. You can learn the whole history of our people by these ornaments. However, safeguarding the continuity of tradition is as important for the ornament as it is for the ritual of offering a sacrifice. Otherwise, the initial meaning will be distorted. Sometimes you will see that people have changed the ornaments to make them look more beautiful. For example, they turn them around. But on a proper budilukche, they have to be in this type of direction. At this point, Maya switches to the Yevon language out of habit. She and her sister-in-law are concerned whether their children and grandchildren are going to follow the tradition, if they are going to retain their culture, if they are not going to yield to the temptations of the modern world. You probably remember what happened in Soviet times. 
I remember my mother told me, the Russians came to us in order to destroy our traditions. The beadworks we made, kunduku, they destroyed a lot of them. That was a mistake they made. Young people today are different. We knew much more because we always listened to our parents. I was born under those conditions, as well as Kiryak, and we all grew up in the tundra under conditions like these. The elderly still remember those golden years before they were moved to the villages during Soviet times. Valentina Dolganskaya is also among those people, an aunt cousin of Karyak and Maya. She's lived in the tundra for most of her life. But when the old age manifested itself, she settled down in the small village of Hainda for health reasons. At the time, the state was actively implementing a policy of civilizing the reindeer herdsmen. Valentina and her late husband were provided an apartment of 30 square meters. This was a mansion compared to living in a yurt. However, the old lady nostalgically remembers her nomadic life now that she has settled down. In this photo, we are dressed for a special occasion. We wore these outfits in the tundra too. They are made of fur. In this photo, we are fishing. Here we put up small urts. We cooked there, made fire. When the mosquitoes arrived, we hid in the tents. That's how we went fishing. That's how I went fishing. There were tents like this. Now there's nothing. Valentina Dalganskaya has lost much during her lifetime. Like all nomadic people, she never got attached to things. She only kept that which was truly priceless. For instance, the mascot of her husband, who was a reindeer herdsman who did not have any male descendants. This was my husband's tobacco box. The case is made from a real sheep's horn. The top is wooden. You open it and scoop out the tobacco. The fire was fed this way to call for good weather. The tobacco box was covered in reindeer skin and embroidered with beads. Then a rope was wrapped around it and it was ready to be taken to the tundra. The tobacco box and the photographs are real relics, unique fragments of the past. Valentina makes national Yevin clothes for the entire neighborhood to retain their traditions. I used to sew a lot by hand for special occasions. I made bead ornaments the way my mother taught me, and she was taught by her mother. No one knows how old this ornament is, nor the age of the kuklianka, the upper garment made of fur. But it holds a special meaning. It is a garment that is almost ready for my burial. I just need to cut off the bells and to loosen the nanali knots. Then the soul after death will be much lighter when it goes to the upper world. But while the seams of my clothes and my shoes are stitched on the inside, I'm protected from the evil spirits. So routinely, the old Yevon lady removed the border between the world of the living and the world of the dead. The ornament, which symbolized life for the young Valentina, turned into a funeral ornament for when she became old. But she is not at all afraid of draining the cup of life. The Yevans believe that after death, one soul goes to the upper world of Bunin to meet the ancestors by the Great Fire. Long forgotten songs come back to life there, and souls compete in races riding celestial reindeers. <laughs>
To maintain the connection of the elderly to the lifestyle they are used to, they introduced the annual Day of the Reindeer Herdsman in the 1930s. It provided an opportunity for older nomads to meet with their relatives. But more importantly, in the guise of a professional holiday, they managed to safeguard the ancient ritual of celebrating the day of the reemergence of the sun. On that day, the offering of the Hevik reindeer was held and reindeer-drawn sleigh races took place. Pagan competitions of the old and new life are the reason for Ilya's visit. It's very important that the reindeer behave well. Naturally, I feel anxious. For the son of the elder, this race is predominantly a competition with himself, an opportunity to show his worth and to feel his pulse racing in time with the harpy of the reindeer. All that's left is to wait for the race to start. But all of a sudden, something completely irrational happens. The reindeer race off without any command. The race, for some, has already tragically finished without even having started. Once wild animals, reindeer did not allow people to completely tame them. It is much more difficult to manage them than a horse or a dog. They saw a lot of people and equipment. That's why they became anxious. On the second lap, it seems that Ilya suffered the same fate. His reindeer rebelled. It seems that there is no happy ending to this story. If taking into consideration that it wasn't only the spectators that scared the reindeer, but also the manner in which the races are held, that is foreign to the descendants of the reindeer people. Ever since I can remember, or as far back as I can remember, I was already riding on a reindeer. This memory of an elder Yevon reindeer herdsman, as well as those hundred-year-old photographs, prove one thing. The traditional lifestyle of the Yevons has changed a lot over the course of the past 200 years. Don't scare the reindeer away with the equipment. You'd better go up that mountain and from there go on foot. While the hermits of the Seredini range are balancing on the edge between nature and civilization, while they are consciously restricting themselves from using modern facilities, there remains an overwhelming desire to follow the nomadic paths of their ancestors and their solitude. This is their pledge to themselves and their way of living according to the law of Mother Nature, Yenin Buga.